Hey, good evening. I'm Dolph Jans, the Clearing Strategies Group. I want to personally welcome you to Smart Retirement Tax. It's an excellent uh, presentation. I think you're really going to enjoy about a lot of the different tax structures, what's going on, ways to save money, and so forth. So thank you for taking the time to join us for about the next uh, 30 to 35 minutes, hopefully, and uh, answer any questions for you. On the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see a chat button. You can type in your questions there or my email address. You can send them there, to my, there as well. Also, to get a list of the complimentary resources we have, you'll see guardyoursavings.com. You can click that, or if you'd like to schedule a 15-minute consultation on anything you see or hear or learn tonight or any questions, there's my Calendly link, which opens up my full portfolio of calendar, calendars for you, okay? On the screen, you're going to see, uh, basically, I'm not a CPA or an attorney. Um, everything we have is referenced through the presentation of ways of everything in education wise and you'll see this is a uh, just advice opinions and facts for you so i hope you enjoy it and uh like i said if you need a cpa we got cpas on board we more than happy to answer your questions now before we get into it i just want to give you a little bit of insight about where i came from um originally from the great state of michigan uh but why did i get into this industry some people will ask i'm not gonna make this a long story i'm just gonna for you who haven't that don't know me there was a time back in the day I used to work in Nevada, in Lake Tahoe, Reno, and Las Vegas. And I was a dealer out there. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of nice things. But the wow and wow atmosphere of people forget that uh, when you lose money out there, it's not coming back most of the time. And those bright lights didn't shine for anything. Well, I met a guy named Brandon Thomas out there. He, he was a local. And it was just watching him week in, week out. And he was just losing. The guy couldn't win nothing. And it just got to the point where I started feeling guilty that he was losing money all the time. And I was like, God, I wish there was a way of doing it. Well, he lost and lost. And then one day he uh, was playing a slot machine and he hit a jackpot for about, I don't know, thirty five, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And he was ecstatic. He's like, hey, Dolph, I won this money. And then he found out he had to pay taxes on that money. And he's like, wait, what about all the money I lost over here? Well, that wasn't a taxable event because of the rules of Vegas. You went on the tables. There's no taxes to, to for. And I started, when I finally left there, I was like, you know, I want to get back into what I, I really did for. And I love numbers and helping and educating people. And I consider myself an educator first. I'm like, you know, I'm going to get into an industry that educates people on how to maybe avoid paying taxes or pay less in taxes and not to lose money. And because one phrase of the best way to make money is not to lose money. And that's why I wrote my book uh, about a year and a half ago called Cross the Bridge to Retirement. Again, if you'd like to have a complimentary copy for attending tonight, we can send you a PDF or a hard version of that um, to you. So please just respond to the right or email or call us. We'd be more than happy to get that uh, book out to you as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also been uh, fortunate enough to have been written articles like in Forbes three times, Money, Fortune, a lot of uh, media outlets, but have a radio show on the air for the past 11 years as well. So again, Education first, everything else second. So just want to share a little bit of information about who I am um, before we get going. So tonight's event is going to provide you not only with some valuable pertinent tax information, but hopefully, hopefully some practical application that will show you how to really improve upon your retirement plans. In fact, we're going to have two halves to this webinar this evening. In the first half, we're going to discuss the important updates made to the tax laws recently and what's changed. We're currently in a seven year short term tax window that could benefit many of the people in this room tonight. We're gonna to look at some of those specific changes are, we're gonna look at uh, what, what's covering, what are some of the tax strategies that haven't changed, more, more important to know what's still important out there that you need to know, what are they not telling you? Then we're gonna look at some applications and see what you should do about implementing proper tax planning into your retirement strategies. During this time, we're gonna spend a few minutes looking at these uh, three guiding principles of retirement planning that every one of our clients go through and the difference of proper tax planning on each of these areas. So whether you came here looking for information on how to better plan for your taxes and your retirement, or you desire to partner with a comprehensive retirement planner like myself, who can show you not only ways to help protect your assets from the market, but from unnecessary taxes too. A quick note on uh, the difference between tax planning and tax preparation Tax preparation looks back at the events that uh, have already been transpired, already have happened, whereas tax planning looks to the future. That's what we like to do, look to the future and attempt to migrate future taxes. Some decisions that can cause short-term tax plan 
can also be great tax savings in the future. Our goal today is to uh, help balance the two by making sure that we're not leaving money on the table for today, but also making sure that when you leave this evening, you understand the comprehensive nature of tax planning for retirement and the importance of implementing it for the future. So what has Congress changed through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that was passed recently, if you're not familiar of it? Well, to get the bill passed, Congress had to labor through a process called reconciliation, which means the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act could lose no more, had to lose no more than $1.5 trillion of government revenue during the next 10 years. But it could not lose any revenue after that 10-year period. So in addition to all these changes that are placed, that are set to expire on January 1st, 2025. This is why it's so important to utilize the benefits that have been made available to us. And as a famous phrase once said, make hay while the sun's still shining. As you can see in this chart, there has certainly been some winners and there's been some losers from this recent tax laws. Many non-service small businesses can now deduct 20% of their income from taxes. That's a huge win for small businesses, but this alone will cost the government an estimated $414 million in taxes. In addition, most medium income earners and retirees will see an overall reduction in their taxes this year based on the increase of the standard deduction and the reduction in most tax brackets. This is, however, a cost the government over $1.48 billion in revenue. And it's and yet been to see whether these matters will stimulate the economy enough to make up a tax gap. But if it doesn't, and I'm going to repeat those words, if it doesn't, it's like, it's a lot more likely that taxes will go back up in the future in a way that we don't want to see them going up in the future. Now, for example, look at the difference of the tax rates as seen from 2017 to the 2021 rates. It's crazy. The circle ones are the ones I... Uh, hit the biggest changes on right now. But I mean, you got 33% going to 24% and the standard deduction, 25, the personal exemptions are eliminated. There's a lot of tax changes that are out there, folks, that are, we have a tax map software that we run for every prospect and client if they request it. And what it does is it does a breakdown on how much taxes you're gonna be paying federal, Work with the state, just the federal, how to save more on tax by taking out less or how to, increase your income by taking out more and not costing you any more money in taxes. It's valuable information. We'll be talking about the tax map software pretty much a little bit later in the presentation as well. But again, if it's something that interests you at all times, you can go to the right, click on the Calendly link and schedule a 15 minute time frame. That's all it takes to run the software. It's a wonderful set of pages that can do this for you as well. So here are a few more changes that have gone into effect as well. Standard deduction has increased, which some in a lot of points is good. Points. It's the increased ATM to 114,600 joint, which is a possible impact on charitable contributions due to the dramatically reduced itemization on the exemptions. Mortgage interest deduction is reduced to 750,000 dollars mortgages. What the worry about this is the concerns about the impact on property value. Then we got double estate exclusion to 11.7 million per person, and you'll see a lot of these points throughout the presentation. I didn't do those numbers. I don't know why they don't just make it simple and just round it off to 12 million. That's a question, believe it or not. I get a lot of people asking me when I'm talking on these things. Why did they do 0.7? Why did they do 0.6? I wish I could answer that question for you, but unfortunately I can't. So I just want to let you know that ahead of time. They got the elimination of the ACH individual mandate and penalty. The repeal of miscellaneous itemized deductions, which is basically investment fees and taxes which uh, rumor on the rumor mill, and I said we're doing a webinar in a couple of weeks about the proposed Biden tax changes. This one could heavily change uh, with the talk about investment fees for just having investment accounts out there. So that would be hurting. Then you got 529 plans, allows for tax favorable distributions for elementary and secondary school expenses up to 10,000 per student annually. That's a good number. Personally, I think it should be a little bit higher. Some may not have deductions exceeding 25,100 of the standard deductions. So that's why the number is they came up with. So you're getting a standard deduction of 25,100, which is considerably higher than what it used to be. Again, 25,100, why not just make it 25,000? I don't know. But you make multiple years contributions in one. So the donor is advised fund can distribute their contributions and charity contributions over time. 
and age 70 and a half, which is now uh, 72 because of the new tax laws, can take um, qualified charitable distributions, which I'll explain later in the presentation. And this is up to $100,000, where the first dollars to char charity will be from an IRA. That's an, a way I'm going to be talking about in a little bit about sources to save on money. I mean, basically, a note on the charitable deductions with uh, increased standard deductions, there are fear that giving to nonprofits are going to go down since deductions are not tax deductible for most people. However, there are two ways for this, around this for some, by making multiple years donations in a single year. Because a lot of people, I mean, they're taking COVID aside, are not like donating to churches and charities as they once were for a lot of different reasons. But now if you're over 72 years old, which is the new RMD, um, you can think, make a thing called a qualified charitable distribution, which acts the same way as a gift, but will satisfy your RMD. So let's just, for an example, say your RMD is $10,000 and you got a big account. Well, you don't need the $10,000, but you do need the write-off. Well, you can take it out of your qualified account. Let's just say it's with company ABC. Send that $10,000 check to your church. Let's say it's check or church DEY. And that church will get that charitable contribution. You've taken it out of the RMD. You've satisfied your RMD. Guess what? You don't have to report it on taxes. You get that $10,000 deduction going forward. That is a, a very, very important thing to realize if you're not utilizing the qualified charitable deduction. Now, above the line, um, there's still above a few deductions that we can use to reduce our taxable income even before the standard deduction. IRA contributions, obviously for traditional IRA SEPs and those, $6,000 per individual, and it's $7,000 for individual, individuals over the age of 50 or 55, depending on the tax limitations on there. But those are ways of getting some extra deductions on your taxes. HSA contributions, $3,600 for individuals, $7,200 for families, plus $1,000 if you're over the age of 55. So that's a benefit right there. And you get half of your self-employment deductions from like Social Security and Medicare. So those are above the line instances that you can get money out as well. And some more uh, above the line deductions you can use is student loan interest up to $2,500 per year. It's phased out. If your income hits uh, 65 to 80 for a single or 135 to 165 as a joint. So once again, this is one that you want to go with your CPA to make sure it's, it's the way you want it to be. And it's all on the up and up because the last thing you want to do is upset the government and have them send one of those beautiful letters to you that we've all received at some point in our life. Again, alimony, deductible if ordered before 12-31-18. Again, that's a very before, but that's an above the line tax deduction. That's where the Jobs Act of 2019 cut that out. So that's why the deductions at that time frame. Early withdrawal penalties could be above the line deductions as well. And limited, very limited business expenses, such as school teachers up to $250, Army reserves of traveling over 100 miles, expenses to uh, disabled persons to work. I mean, there's a lot of information we're covering on this stuff in such a short time, but these are things uh, that you might need to know about. Now, if you um, looking for these, the slides here, you're looking for more information on taxes. Again, if you look to the right, you can see a calendar link. You can set a 15 to 30 minute conversation to get all the information to run the software for you. Or if you just want to see all the list of all the um, complimentary resources we have, you can go to guardyoursavings.com. That will list of uh, all the complimentary savings we do out there for you. Again, I'm an educator first and an advisor second in all phases of my life. So. Those are some good ways to get the information for yourself as well. So we're going to jump right into uh, the SECURE Act. What was a SECURE Act? Well, it actually comes around every single year, but it stands for Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement. And this one passed in December of 2019, and uh, the biggest retirement legislation in over a decade. And it includes a variety of changes, ranging from what's available in your 401k to withdrawal, to requirement changes. Very in-depth pack that went through. Let's just put there, there's something the act for different things. And I said, there was like 37 things passed in the SECURE Act that focused on uh, four. We're focusing on the ones that really hit home with taxes and so forth. <clears throat> the economic impacts of the coronavirus pandemic cannot be ignored here. And the fallout from COVID-19 is likely to last for much longer than many of us are really going to want to like do. I mean, Look at the three reasons why it's possible for taxes could rise in response to this pandemic. 
on the CARES Act and economic impact plans, the stimulus measures passed in response to the COVID-19 is uh, between three and five trillion dollars. And it looks like likely that more stimulus measures are on the horizon. That number is just going to keep on getting higher and higher. You got federal individual income taxes collected in the U.S. for the fiscal year of 2019 totaled 1.7 trillion. All federal corporate taxes collected in 2019, which was a good year, were computed at 230 billion dollars. In 41 days, we spent 164 percent of the entire previous year's total income tax collections. Let me say that again: all the taxes that were brought in and everything was paid. In 41 days, we already spent 164% of that. So we may want to know that we ended a fiscal year 2019 with about $1 trillion deficit. So if everything becomes perfect tomorrow and on the health and on the health front, which would be a miracle cure, we'd have a deficit of about $3.8 trillion. In other words, our deficit is greater than all our revenue. And this is directly from Forbes. Reasons for this, high unemployment. Stubborn unemployment remaining high results in the loss of revenue for both federal government and states. This could require states to increase taxes and to help raise those funds. The lost tax revenue from people losing their jobs and taking unemployment means losses of revenue, hence tax revenue. And critical programs like Social Security and Medicare, which really need that extra money. Even though there are people paying taxes on these unemployment payments, it's not the same amount. The lost tax revenue from other things that people don't consider paint even a bleaker picture. Will COVID-19 induce behavioral change, like companies shifting to remote work and not renting commercial space to result in increase in cost of property taxes? States that receive income from tourism like Colorado could not find themselves in a tougher spot financially. If industries like the ski and for much longer than expected. So the truth is, folks, is that these changes could result in long-term economic impacts that we are just likely beginning to feel right now. This means tax planning is even more important when state and federal governments are looking for ways to increase revenue. And I'm not trying to be a scary technique by any means, but these are actually known facts is the longer this continues, the more places that are going to impact these changes. Let's make sure that we have a good understanding of how taxes work in retirement. There are four main ways that your assets are taxed. By the way, if you had funds in all these following buckets of money, the tax environment was a currently favored one, which funds would you want to withdraw first to pay your living expenses? The fully taxable bucket the tax def- and the tax deferred funds. Why? Because if taxes are low and that we believe they will be going back in the future, then all things being equal, we'd want to pull the funds out from a taxable account now and pay the taxes while they are still low, saving on our capital and tax resources for higher potential tax rate. It's things to think of because in four buckets, you got your long term capital gains tax, which your assets are held outside of qualifiable accounts for more than 12 months. You got your fully, ta- fully taxable accounts, which is pensions, short term gains, stock dividends. Then you got your tax deferred bucket, which is traditional IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, non qualified annuities, and savings bonds. Then you got your uh, tax free ones, which are Roth IRAs, municipal bonds, life insurance, and even portions of your social security income, which can be de- which can be described later as well. An IRA, 401k, and 403 can also, often cost you more than uh, tax you ever planned on. Um, during your, own, your retirement years, you could easily argue that these are least tax efficient accounts that you own. Every distribution is taxed at your ordinary income tax rate. This may actually put you in a higher tax bracket if you're not your tax planning is not correct. Distributions often lead to additional tax on your Social Security income. This is another thing we cover in our in our meetings on how much Social Security mo- money is going to be taxed. I mean, up to 44% and higher going forward in married couples. Distributions from these can only lead to more tax on capital gains. It only accounts that re- requires distributions like RMDs, even if you don't want or need the money. So as I explained earlier, if you don't need the money, and you want that deduct extra deduction and you have a charity out there, there's one way of doing it. And of course, the highest taxed account leaving to your heirs going forward is, is a stingy one as well. You can reallocate your assets from tax bucket to help minimize taxes on your income in retirement. One of these popular strategies you've probably heard of is to do a Roth conversion. It's not correct for everybody, but it is correct for some people. And if you do it properly, 
it's an excellent way of transferring taxes going forward in your life, especially if taxes are getting more expensive. I mean, converting your IRA to a Roth IRA is considered a direct distribution. So you have to pay ordinary income taxes on the amount converted in that year. However, if you have a reasonably long investment time frame, like 10 years or more ahead, you're more likely to benefit the future tax advantage growth and tax-free distributions during retirement. Note that if you pay your taxes in a Roth IRA rollover with proceeds from the account, that money is deemed as a distribution and is subject to tax and applicable penalties depending on your age. So it's recommended that you pay those taxes with other assets and not that one as well to avoid those penalties. Converting a traditional IRA or qualified asset to a Roth is a taxable event and could result in additional impacts on your situation. That's where the tax map software that we run can show you what it's going to cost you pretty much down to a couple percentage points. And is it worth doing it? And that's what I call a stretch Roth IRA conversion, where you do the Roth conversion over a set period of time. Just do it all at once. You have $500,000, stretch it over five years, minimize your taxes. Because including the need for additional tax withholdings or estimated tax payments, the loss of certain deductions and tax credits are higher on your Social Security benefits and your Medicare premiums. So advantages of a Roth conversion? Well, the future income received is received tax-free after five years. Larger sums of money can be accessed in case of emergency, such as long-term care, without significantly raising your tax bracket if you're over 59 and a half years old. You get the possible reduction of tax owed on your Social Security benefits by receiving tax-free qualifications for income from a distribution. RMDs are not required on Roth IRAs, giving you more flexibility in retirement. It also could help you reduce the size and tax liability um, of your estate. But in order for a Roth distribution to be treated tax-free, two requirements must be satisfied. The distribution must be being made on or after the date the IRA owner turns 59 and a half, and five years must pass from the first con con contribution is made to any Roth IRA until a qualified distribution can be made. For instance, an example, married couple, both five, at top of tw uh, 2017, they had a 15% tax bracket. The goal is to convert the $200,000 to a Roth IRA. The 2018 rules is the cost of conversion is 22%, where the cost of conversion in 2017 was 28%. That's uh, over 20% in savings by doing the Roth conversion now versus waiting down the road because taxes are or the income is a lot lower now than it is future. But again, you got to make sure you talk to your CPA to make sure it can fit into your recording. Again, this is where the tax map software that we do provide um, for you, which you can sign up on the right, can show you exactly what amount of percentage you're going to be costing in taxes if you do a Roth conversion, how much it's going to do for the forward, and if it's beneficial for you. So again, I'm going to stress Roth conversion is a wonderful thing if done properly, but it's not the right thing for everybody. So you got to make sure you do it the right way going forward. So what would happen if uh, one spouse dies? We'll try with this example to make assumptions of, as well as what would happen to a surviving spouse's tax situation going forward. We'll assume that there's a reduction in Social Security since the surviving spouse will only get one of the two benefits, whatever is larger. Because of that, there will be the need to take more from the IRAs, continuing the same standard cost of living. Because a lot of people don't have to, like, to have that change in lifestyle. Because we only have one single spouse instead of two, there's only one standard deduction instead of two. Additionally, there's one person with exemption going forward. So in terms of Social Security benefits, the income thresholds for single persons are different from those who are married, which can mean a bigger percentage for those being taxable. So you can see this, and then uh, and don't forget, it's like 80% of males die married, or 80% of females die widowed and single. This is why it's very unimportant to survive in the spousal taxation. And people say, well, we're that 80%. That's, that's a kind of a dreadful high number. Well, if you look at it, women are historically 80% more likely to outlive men. That's where it's going for. <clears throat> but here, you look here on the, the married side, filing jointly, they got discretionary income of $59,000. And then boom, on the right side, it's down to 54000 here. So let's make this simple. And if you transfer your wealth properly and you do the right deductions and everything like that, you want to keep that discretionary income pretty close. And the big difference in the two right there is that the income tax 
for the married was only 988 with the income tax for the individual was 5357 that's where the difference is right there and the key to proper tax planning is to make sure that tax raise doesn't rise for that surviving spouse going forward so let's try to make some application out of this as i said earlier i don't want to just give you some information on tax changes and strategy but i want to give you some examples how we can utilize proper tax planning into a comprehensive retirement plan all everyone here is looking to ensure that they don't ever run out of money in retirement i mean you look at the top uh five fears in the world today number one is public this is different you'll see different ones from over there but the one i look at um encyclopedia you look at number one is public speaking number two is spiders number three is heights number four is running out of money and number five is dying those are generally the five periods. So you're telling me I could stand on the top of a building with spiders all around me um, with no money before I'm afraid of dying and talking in front of a lot of people. So you got to put this in perspective. I mean, Warren Buffett, who's done pretty well for himself, did the old, the best way to make money is not to lose money. It's what you keep that counts. It's like rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. But you're here also to dive into these tax laws as well. And at the end of the day, for its purpose of saving and growing money in retirement to help protect against the unfortunate prospect that many people face, which is running out of money before they pass away. Simple as it seems, the most effective way not to run out of money is to have an income plan that ensures you don't run out of money. Yes, it's simple on the surface, but time after time, I've met with so many people that don't have a semblance of a written plan whatsoever. They're all winging it or they overthink it or they procrastinate. So I wonder how many people here have a written plan that specifies you want to convert it to a Roth, what happens in the potential of a long-term care could do to your portfolio, and how much income do you need in your portfolio to sustain in your lifetime? I call this the today, tomorrow, never plan. I mean, having money for today to enjoy today, tomorrow, having that money for tomorrow to enjoy your life in retirement, and that never money, the money you never plan on touching down the road, boy, it's nice to know it's there in case something happens. That is tax planning because you got your, you're got user utilizing all the tax buckets, the tax-free, the tax-deferred, and the taxable bucket correctly to maximize the most uh, out of your portfolio so you never will run out of money and you'll take that fear off the table so you can be afraid of falling off of windows or afraid of heights or talking in front of people. The more fears you can take off, the less risk you have in retirement. The less risk you have in retirement, the happier your retirement's going to be. 17, 18 years, I've seen a lot of clients of mine retire, and they're all happy because they have that income plan going forward. He said, I highly encourage you to schedule a few minutes with me on the Calendly link to see if any of this information could potentially help you going forward. Or at worst, just see the education pieces I'm giving you complimentary and go to guardyoursavings.com on the right side of the screen to get that for you. <clears throat> so you do have, do you have a written income plan? I said, we run a thing called the Where Do I Stand plan takes your certain situation today and how much money you have and to see if you're going to have a shortfall and the red can create a shortfall. And then also we put this in collaboration with our tax map software to maximize the most amount of money you can take out for you never run out of money going forward. So you can have different, pro it shows you the different probabilities, the exceptions going forward. It will break down your tax structure in a full way of down to the penny of how much social security money you're getting, how much tax structure you're getting, what happens if you pass away, because you can actually pick the day that you pass away and we can change that on the plan from 80 to 85 to 90 to 95 years old. I mean, people out there right now have a 20% a chance to making it to a hundred. And uh, that's a lot of years to be in retirement and have that much money, but do you have the right plan going forward? Because don't forget about that silent killer in retirement, it's called inflation and health risk. The two biggest risks next to longevity in retirement, in my opinion, and having the proper income plan and the proper tax plan can get rid of fear in retirement. So guiding principle number two, hmm, let's, let's uh, knock down a, a horse again. Don't run out of money. The other one, don't you don't have the money, now you don't run out of money. I mean, you're looking into a way to never run out of a retirement and running, correct? Well, it's simple as it seems, continuing on this guiding principle number two of still don't run out of money. Let's cover the, the, the forefront right from it. 
Tax savings alone can justify the necessity of a comprehensive plan. But if we said earlier, different tax environments necessitate different taxable income sources. But as we all know that these tax brackets can and probably will change, and we need to be proactive in our retirement planning to adapt to these. With these different tax planning buckets, it's, it's very important to know when to take out the funds, how to take out the funds, and from what funds to take out. For example, one thing we wanna look at is the location of the funds as, as well as looking at the allocation going forward with these funds. Very important to realize that because you wanna look at the different taxable buckets. And what we talked about earlier is you got the taxable bucket, the tax deferred and the tax free. You wanna have these buckets in retirement. You almost need these for a good retirement tax planning program to help you get more money and take out less and avoid that volatility out there. Because there's different times when we should be tapping into each of these different buckets when you're going into retirement. And if taxes are low, as they are right now, basically they're supposed to be until 2025, and they might be forever right now, then where do we be taking our money from? From IRAs? Now is the time to be sending down your IRAs, paying your fully taxable investment of income because the lowest they may ever, ever be in your lifetime going forward. That's that's saying something because pay your taxes now where their lowest ever be. You could save on your Roth IRAs. You could save your non-qualified programs. So if when taxes go back up, then you get to realize your long-term capital gains or possibly start pulling the money out of your Roth at that point. <clears throat> A lot of people have IRAs. Some people might have Roths or they might have other funds. But if you think about a, a, a junk drawer of financial tools and different taxable income, You've done a good job in diversifying your taxable income. As a part of our job to help you determine a sequence of when exactly to use those funds, where and how. This is not the part of running out of money. You need to be wise when you take out your funds, how you take them out, and from where. It's so important to understand that aspect. Because taxes are not going to be going up. I mean, you have your opportunity to take taxes being low right now. I know we're still paying taxes. But utilize it in the proper formation of, hey, if I take out my money that's tax low now and convert it if you're able to to a Roth IRA when taxes go up in 2025, there's potential savings for you right down there. Again, this is what our tax map software can provide for you free of cost. Guiding principle on there. Number two, again, don't lose your money. Of course, it goes without saying that if we have an income plan in place, we must also have a plan to protect against losing our assets so we can actually implement said plan. One thing to consider as well, if you had the choice, what do you think is easier? To instantly increase your returns or to implement a tax savings? In other words, is it easier to time the market or easier to thoroughly research and implement all the tax savings that are available to you? It's a good question to ask yourself. Personally, I think it's a lot easier to plan for taxes than it is to plan for returns. Does anyone remember 2008? I mean, most millennials weren't even out of college during the last financial crisis, and there's never been through a recession themselves. Did anyone here lose any money during that time? Mm -hmm. Of course, everyone more likely did. But yeah, well, we all acknowledge that we lost money during the last downturn. I ask how many of you could have identified substantial changes if you made your portfolio to prevent those losses from happening again? How many of you uh, have did so? How many people have learn from the past. I mean, we've gone through a heck of a long time right now, late recently, but the last decade, don't forget about 2001 as well, but in the last 10, 11 years, things have been going pretty darn good, but how long is good? I mean, not everything lasts forever, as some people say, unfortunately, but how many people can identify a tangible strategy that you implement in your portfolio to protect you against the loss like 2008 from happening again? If you can't answer this question in the top of your head, it's important that you consider another analysis on your portfolio. So in response to the question, people are awful tell us that they're not diversified enough. The problem is that the S&P 500 represents 500 stable American companies that combined lost nearly 50% of their value. Diversification works until it doesn't. You shouldn't own common stocks if a 50% decrease in that value in a short period would cause you to acute distress. And that's according to Warren Buffett. This is great advice for building wealth, but the reality is that retirees aren't comfortable with their entire nest egg decreasing 50% in a short time frame. Would you be as well? 
And if you look at this time, I mean, if you go down 50%, how much money do you need to recover from that 50%? These are all the different volatilities. I don't know if you can see them on the bottom in the center of your screen, but that's that's the time frame from 2000 to 2020. I mean, it's easy to remember the good years, 2017, when we experienced unprecedented smooth growth. It was just like a smooth the whole time. Yet we all taught to buy low and sell high, um, as they did in Trading Places, a great movie. You've ever seen that one, but that's it's never that easy. And generally, we're, we're at markets historically are high, but how we're taught at many of us today is to, to sold our positions, placed everything into cash. Probably not many, in part because the amount of uncertainty in the air right now, there's these times that we've, we've never seen before, and that's why we need a plan to help protect and preserve our assets right now going forward, especially going into retirement. Remember, investing in retirement isn't the same as investing in your in retirement. If you don't know what's in your portfolio, what would you do in the next recession? It's vital to have a clear understanding of the current risk that you're taking. Because if it goes down 40%, how much do you need? You almost need like 68, 70% to get back to even. There are strategies out there that you can get upside potential and take away downside risk. It's a good thing to what you want to keep that counts in protecting your portfolio. I mentioned, I said, if you want to learn about some of these strategies, they're out there. You can just click on the county link. It's 15 minutes. It's free consultation. Zoom over the phone or in person. And we can do it. You can click the county link. Or if you hit guardyoursavings.com, there's a lot of reports and books and free information we're going to get you. One of my favorite is an article I wrote for Forbes, which got over 387,000 views in the first month. And it was called The Hardest Day of Your Life is the Day You Retire. So if you want a complimentary copy of that, please just ask. I'd love to share it with you. One of the things that we do for every person is come to meet with us is performing a stress test of their portfolio. If you can't point out something in your portfolio right now that you've done to protect yourself from the next downturn, it's time to begin that discussion. A lot of people wait and they wait for that that moment. Say, you know, I'm gonna, I'll figure it out. And then they procrastinate. Oh, it went like last year. We had that big dip for four months and it came flying back. Is that going to happen again? When is enough is enough? You got to realize that yourself going forward. And finally, why waste your money? I mean, let's take a second look at the potential impact of the perfect storm of long-term care and taxes that many people will face. The largest expense that most people ever have in their lives is taxes. You'll likely spend more in taxes than you will on your own home, your education, or almost anything else. The second largest single expense you're likely to run into is potential expenses of long-term care. As of 2020, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, there's a 70% chance someone turning 65 will need some form of long-term care assistance in their remaining years in their life. That's a high number. And even though we don't enjoy talking about this topic, you need to know about it. We also want to be an ostrich and stick our heads in the sand concerning the potentially large financial burden that this might cause for you. The average cost of a fully skilled nursing facility, the expenses are real and they are steep. Now imagine what you need to pull out 15952 from your IRA every month. Even if you could afford it, what would that do to your tax bracket? Most likely raise it significantly. To be fair, where some expenses are qualified can be tax deductible, but expenses are not prescribed in a medical physician included, such as daycare, assistance, transportation needs, etc. These expenses not only add up fast, but provide a major draining on your nest egg and can go to your loved ones. I mean, an average national nursing home costs $87.73. That's not a year. That's a month. With the average inflation services, cost of care is going to be $15,000, $16,000 down the road. Are you ready for that? That's something out there. Do you have long-term care insurance? We have a long-term care agent in our office, Jeff Conyers. Complimentary consultations offer long-term care alternatives, long-term care, and see if the options out there and report to you and what they might cost. I've been talking all presentation long about this complimentary tax map software that I have for you. And this is just like one of the pages here out of the 17-page report. Everybody's situation is different, but you're going to see like the different graphs you're going to see what we plug in. We plug in the numbers that you're going to tell us to plug in there. And when I plug in these numbers in there, it's going to show you what tax bracket in there. And like it's in the bottom part of the screen, you'll see that red line. Well, those, that's the danger zone. That's how much you're paying extra in taxes. That's what the tax map software that if you, you call or text us is the number we can provide for you free of charge. Also going into the where I stand plan to avoid those shortfalls in your retirement plan. So I encourage you, it's like I said, 15 minutes at most to run this plan, at least know where you are, 
and we can also include this plan going farther in the future for as well. So it doesn't have to just be for 2020. We can go all the way up to 2032 and the projected tax increases of what might be leaping ahead. So I hope you weren't not only to discover some tax changes and strategies tonight, but I've seen the importance of implementing a tax planning strategy into your overall retirement portfolio. If this is something you have never done or you've done before, but you're not quite sure about it, let me offer you a second opinion on your plans in place. No, it would be our pleasure to sit down with you for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, however long, and have a casual conversation about how a comprehensive tax retirement plan could improve your, your scenario. Again, you can go and get you'll see my whole calendar at calendly.com slash Dolph Janice to schedule this time frame. Or if you're not ready for that, no problem. You just want to educate yourself some more. You can go to guardyoursavings.com and that will be all the different resources we have. Again, I appreciate all the information that I, from the companies that have given me this to allow this to share this with you. I appreciate you all spending your uh, the last 42, 43 minutes of your day with me. Hope you got a few things out of it. Again, I'm not a CPA, but I am an educator. And the best way to make money, again, is not to lose money, and it's what you keep that counts. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much. And I truly look forward to talking to you sometime in the near future. Take care now. Bye-bye.